Welcome everyone to a one laptop per child episode. We got this OLPC actually probably a decade ago for my involvements in open source, Linux kernel, X driver, you name it. And it was in storage for probably the last nine years and it doesn't turn on anymore. And I already disassembled this and actually the very first ones had a problem that if the clock battery runs down and the clock reads zero, it won't boot due to the secure boot process crashing and uh, you don't get anything then. Apparently they have fixed this in later firmware revisions, but as this is one of the very first ones, we now have the problem of this brick device. And to disassemble this, I did this already two weeks ago. Unfortunately off camera, maybe leave in the comments below if you want to see each and every disassembly and such. You need to unscrew this, screws here, that you reach by turning it over, so screw here and here and <coughs> then you slide off this plastic and unscrew the display and shield or something and then after doing this you can remove the back panel so you can't just remove the back panel you need to do all the front side first then you reach the back side and here we have one of the two serial connectors the other is somewhere else uh, wherever some embedded control or something this one is going to the main geode x86 gpu i had this shield off the other day i made an instagram post not so much to see there except the amd geode so this serial port is not a normal serial port it where you could connect a old-fashioned serial cable to like this USB one because this regular serial port operate with positive and negative levels. This is usually plus minus 12 volt or at least ranging from plus minus 3 to plus minus 15 or so. The regular PC standard was I think plus minus 12 but usually they should work from everything from plus minus 3 to plus minus 15 or so. However like many embedded things so we would need to convert this with a Max 232 or something to a regular serial port or directly interface with a USB chip to this level. So I got two converter things here that you can get for some five bucks from Amazon or eBay or another electronic supply. So this has a converter circuit for a line level here that should operate from three, maybe even 1.8 volt. And another one, and this one doing the direct USB interfacing, so that is a more complex circuit. By the way, this is the soldering quality you get from Amazon from China here with this flux residues. Looks a little bit suspicious. I had similar quality already once with some serial ATA to parallel IDE bridge. Looks of course not the very nicest. Maybe we try to use this one first, just for the fun, so I have already here this micro molex something in there let's hope and see that we're getting our serial signal there to set the clock they by the way also had problems with this um, battery coming loose and this by the way is rechargeable so apparently it also only lasts some months instead of some years on battery storage this is also slightly unfortunate so fortunate they use it rechargeable unfortunate that it doesn't last very long and uh, yeah so let's solder this pins here to to the serial adapter first and see what we're getting maybe i so pin one was at the bottom starting here on the left vcc Then we have the last one is force ground. Unfortunately, this is of course now fully reversed here, color wise. And then two is transmit. This is a white one here. So transmit is a question probably. They mean this arrow, I guess. 
that is when people put fancy arrows on their PCB and not text and then last but not least receive so that should be good enough for this one time use of course I will keep this adapter around like this and only resolder in case needed the next time I know precisely what pin out we need in that moment okay this is of course not very long let's see a little bit extra force required to get this cut iBook speaker cable in there so let's see what we're getting can actually measure if our adapter gets 3 volt and only question the power button was on the other side yeah here it is now now we got power why does it play sound now? Um, okay. So maybe waiting one month fixed it by itself. That is of course... Or not indeed says invalid system date. It, it didn't do this two weeks ago. Or is this... This is of course funny. I swear it didn't hit screen a week ago. Uh, okay. Fixed it by itself. People in the forum said help waiting four weeks is not enough because um, it would not overflow the date in this inconsistent state. Here is so much to needing a serial cable to fix this. Funny. This is of course um, whatever. We can assemble it again. Um, did it have a touchscreen? Probably not. Huh? There is so much for Apple inventing this oversized touchscreen. Uh, the old PC had this already 10 years ago. But I didn't find it that comfortable even at the old PC. Not at Apple, not at the old PC. But the biggest problem is that this keyboard obviously is awful. This rubber thing is total craziness to type on. Okay, so let's see if we at least get the boot messages to prove our theory wiring but uh, otherwise um, yeah really don't quite understand how it fixed itself now after two weeks as I said it's not four weeks to overflow the month that is zero so no idea why it booted as you can hopefully see there um, at least the theory wiring works here we get here some output system, embedded system data. Why ever it is booting now? Um, so if you need this, this is how you do the wiring with a TTL to serial adapter, either to serial or USB. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos. This is, by the way, the famous reflective mode of this Qui or Geo, whatever it was named display. So this is with backlight and it's reflective even without backlight to use it outdoors and save energy and such. And uh, this is the first generation of those displays. Later displays are said to reflect slightly more. And now I need to uh, also reassemble this. By the way, the battery showed here full, battery fully charged. So, but if I pull it out, there is no charge left so I guess the battery might be fully dead also so now I need to think how many screws I guess this was from screwed from the other side so I need to partially disassemble it again